Hello, hello guys, happy Friday. Sandy McTeer here with another Art for Everyone lesson. And today we're gonna paint evergreen sprigs with an angle brush. Not sure if you've ever done it, super cool, really easy, so much fun. And a couple different ways that you can um, make the brush, not use the brush and paint to make a fluffier look or a very thin look. So if y'all are ready to get started, so am I. Let's turn that right down here. We want to welcome you guys so much again for joining us today for this Art for Everyone lesson. Kelsey is in the comments from Deco Art, so if you have any questions at all, go ahead and pop those in the comments. Something else we'd love to know is where you're from, where you're viewing from. So I am smack dab in the middle of the state of Georgia. So another thing Kelsey will do for y'all in the comments is put a link for the PDF that you can download. This is available on Deco Art's um, Art for Everyone resources. It's just a basic supply list, step-by-step -step instructions. And then I also went ahead on this one and did a worksheet. So you can print this off, put it into a sleeve. Um, I'll demonstrate how I do that in a second. Um, to paint on top of it and use it, but it's a great little resource to have that you can practice right on top of and then wipe it away with a paper towel. So let's zoom in just a tad. See if it'll sometimes can get a little temperamental. Um, so I love to paint evergreen, and one of the easiest ways I have found, like I said, is with an angle brush. So I created these dollar from Michaels, these frames, um, which are such a great idea for gift giving. You can personalize them. I just did a couple of sayings with some rubber stamps in the center and did it so that you could see it on black with white. Love this one. And you always want to make sure that the hole is at the bottom for if you're going to do a design, say like this, where there's a bow at the top so that your frame will stand up. I'll just move those to the side. And love, love, love this little tag. Again, super cute. You could personalize it, um, give that as a gift, do it on smaller tags and use that as a place setting um, for your tablescape. So I went ahead and just prepped a couple of surfaces so that I could show you how um, I paint my evergreen on a surface, but we're not going to actually finish any kind of a project today. I just want to show you how I paint these evergreen sprigs. So let's get some paint colors out. I like to layer when I paint. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of DecoArt Americana Lamp Black. Let's get that on our palette. And I'm just using a gray palette paper. And then we'll get out some Asphaltum, great, great color. Um, has a nice golden touch to that brown. If you don't have that, you could use um, burnt umber, burnt sienna even would be fine. And then probably my go-to all-time favorite green, plantation pine. Put a little bit of that out. Another fantastic color for um, your evergreens, leaves, is antique green. Has a really nice, pretty yellow tone to it. So we'll get some of that out. And then also some white. So snow titanium white. I also, um, I believe, put on the supply list warm white because sometimes it's nice to tone down those greens and not have them so bright. The warm white's gonna do that for you, okay? But for today, I'm just gonna use the snow titanium white. And we'll put that to the side. Okay, so on the worksheet that you'll be able to print off um, in the resources, it's gonna be different layering on plastic than it is on my um, actual surfaces. So I will show you um, how I'm gonna do that on both. But I'm using uh, the DecoArt Traditions brushes, phenomenal artist quality brush. I have probably had these for Oh my goodness gracious, these probably going on six, seven years, if that, maybe around there. And I mean, they just hold up so well, great quality. And if you're not familiar with an angle brush, let's go over that real quick. 
So you can see that it is at an angle. It has a toe, which is that longer side, and a heel. So a toe and a heel, all right? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get that wet, tap it off on my paper towel, and then I'm just going to load up my brush. So I'll just brush mix, little brown, little black. Okay, you know what, how about if I show you on here first and then I'll show you how to do the green on the, um, the worksheet. So I basically just do a stem and then I slide back. I'm sliding on the chisel edge of that brush. The chisel edge is the tippy tips of those bristles. Think of it like you're ice skating. You don't wanna to push too hard. So I'm just sliding back and I'm going from the left to the right, left to the right in the middle to make that nice and full. Okay. And then I just start building off of that. Maybe I want one here. I can just slide back on that chisel edge. If you wanna do one side down the other, I flip flop back and forth. It just depends on what my brush tells me it's gonna do that day, okay? So you've got those nice, thin, but also places where they overlap and make that a little fluffier. And then let's go to our worksheet here so that you can see when you get this and print it off, you'll be able to do the same thing um, if you need to. And then just I just have a little green on my brush and I'm just going to do the stem and slide on those little sprigs there. All right, and so it shows you, the arrow shows you, you know, going to the left, going to the right, and then you can see how fluffy it is. That's because there are strokes on the center. So instead of just going to the left and the right, if I did that, I'd have a nice part right down the middle. So as you're going left, right, in the middle, left, right, in the middle, left, right. And then you can just take a paper towel and wipe that right off. And practice again, okay? And same thing with the berries on there. Um, I just went ahead and put the colors that I used so that you guys can see um, exactly how I did those. If we have time, I will put a couple berries on. But let's zoom in just a little bit more so that you can really see my hand and the way it's moving. Okay, so I'm going to rinse that brush, tap it off on my paper towel, and this time I am going to layer start to finish. So a little black, a little brown. Little black, little brown. All right, now, kind of deciding where you want them on a surface like this, I'm going to to do similar to how I did on this one here, okay? Where they kind of hang over, hang down the side, just to show you how you can lay them out. And so I like to kind of get my placement for a couple first, and then turn that so I can get my hand out of the way. I'm going to slide on the chisel edge, left, right, down the center. Left, right, down the center. Now see how I'm curving them just a little bit? That's because that evergreen sprig is going that direction. So left, right, down the center. Now, can you also see that you could do a palm frond for a palm tree the same exact way? Same way. Again, I like for my evergreens to be dark underneath so that my lighter colors shine and it just gives such great dimension and depth to your evergreen, okay? So now let's rinse that out. And I'm using a 3 8 angle. Um, they have a variety of sizes. My other go-to is the half inch angle. Love how big that one is. Um, to a fourth, all the way down to an eighth, all right? So I'm not worried if those are dry or not. I'm just gonna go right to my next colors and pick up evergreen, excuse me, evergreen. We're painting evergreen sprigs. Plantation pine on both sides. And then on the toe of the brush, remember the toe is that taller um, point. I'm gonna pick up some antique green and just kind of work that in. Might pick up a little bit more of that plantation pine. 
And then I'm going to come right back here and I'm just going to do the same exact thing. Now notice how quick my hand is moving. I'm not going cover, cover. I don't wanna cover up what I've painted on uh, because that could be an automatic shadow for my, um, my evergreen sprig. So see, I can still see some of that black and brown underneath. That's exactly what I want. Left, right, down the center. And it will look much better if you're saying when you're painting, left, right, down the center. It will just remind you that you don't want to just leave a part right down the middle. Although there are some evergreens. Let's see. You've got spruce and firs and, you know, many have different looks. So now what I'm going to do is come in right here where I loaded my brush before and just reload it. Remember, the toe has that light antique green. Now I'm going to pick up a little touch of white, just a little touch of white, and work that in. A little bit more. Work that in. Both sides. Okay? So our whole brush has plantation pine. The toe only has antique green. And now a little bit of white. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing. And this is what brings this evergreen sprig to life. Just love this part. Okay, left, right, down the center. Reload as you need to. Okay, now I can see I've got a little bit of a straight line there. So I like to make sure that I look at that and take care of any of those. Again, plantation pine on the whole brush, antique green on the toe, white on the toe. Work that in. and I'm sliding. Can you see that? Slide, slide. These I'm slightly curving to get that evergreen sprig on there. Okay, how fun and easy and quick is that? All right, so let's do on this dark to show you because I love the, um, and one thing that's heavily trending right now is black and white decor. Now, this is looking a little blue <laughs> um, on the screen. So, um, but I'm going to do just white. So, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to show you a different way. I'm going to start the same, and then show you a slightly different way that you can make these look like flocked evergreen sprigs. So, again, my whole brush has white. I'm just going to tap that on my paper towel to get rid of the excess. And then I'm going to, let's kind of play off this curve here. I'm going to, I just want to get my hand out of the way for you guys. All right, let's go this way. Okay, so then it's touch and pull, left, right, down the center, left, right, down the center. And I'm just sliding, sliding. You can see it. my hand is kind of going this direction. The faster you paint them, I promise, the better they will look. All right, okay. Now, from here, I'm gonna reload my brush. Again, just by flattening it on my palette. And this time, I'm gonna pick up just a little bit more white on that toe. So it's just gonna be a little bit heavier on the toe of the brush. Now, I'm going to touch and tap and pull. So I'm gonna tap, 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 tap. So that tapping is going to give it a flocked look. Can you see that? So love, love, love. And that's what I have on our black frame here. So you can see where I did the stem and then it's just that tap and pull. So let's do that on a card here so I can show you. Let's zoom in just a little bit more so you can see that close up. So I'm going to do my stem. That's just for placement. That kind of gives you some guidance and I know that if I want it to be curved, that's where I start, okay? And then I'm just going to tap, touch and pull. And that's going to give you that flocked evergreen look. Let's get a little bit more paint on there. And so there's nothing wrong with like doing that the first time, getting your placement, 
and then coming back in and filling it in. But I just absolutely love that flocked look where it's a little bit thicker compared to just, you know, your ordinary needles um, on an evergreen sprig. Okay, so I wanna take this a little step further. I had an idea this morning um, as I was putting this all together and getting prepped, I wanted to show how you can take some matte medium. And so this is the uh, DecoArt Media Matte Medium. Absolutely love this. Wish it was in a gallon jar. Um, and then, <laughs> who doesn't love glitter? Now, if you don't like loose glitter, there are some options. We have holographic illusions, um, galaxy glitter. Um, uh, there's the glamour dust paint with glitter inside. There's also craft twinkles. Um, we've got a glitter for just about everything. So, but what I love about this is it's super fine and beautiful. So I'm going to take some of that matte medium and let's just come right over here on our evergreen sprig. And I'm just going to tap that out just as if I were painting it with paint. Sprinkle it. Oh, I can already tell I'm going to love it. Tap it off and look how gorgeous that is. Oh, so pretty, right? And again, you wouldn't have to do all of them. You could just do a couple of them. I just think, again, on a smaller tag, this would be such a beautiful little place card um, or gift for everybody that's invited over for the holidays. And then, of course, you want to put that back into your um, glitter container because we don't want to waste that. Another thing I thought would be really cool is to use um, our Starlight, DecoArt Starlight Varnish. Again, it has a little bit of a sparkle in it as well. So let's back up just a quick second. So when I start to paint on a frame like this from Michaels, um, or any kind of a raw wood that's a little rough, I like to use um, the DecoArt Multi-Purpose Sealer. Just one coat will do. Go ahead and seal that, let it dry, and you're ready to go. Not an absolute must, but I do think sometimes when you prep your piece first, you're setting yourself up for great success, all right? So to varnish this, um, I'm not a big gloss varnish fan. However, I do love matte and I love our soft touch varnishes um, that DecoArt has. But you could use a matte varnish over the entire thing. But I thought this has little sparkly iridescent glitter flakes in it, the starlight varnish. So let's put some of that on this frame and just watch it sparkle. So pretty. We also have the DuraClear um, Galaxy varnish that leaves a little bit chunkier, a little bit more flake of glitter, but look how pretty that subtle little flake of glitter is in that varnish. So you've just kind of double whammied your piece. You varnished it, it's ready to go, and you added a little bit of sparkle. So cool. All right, so let's come back over to here. Let's just kind of recap this one more time. So I'm gonna do the flocked look first, and we'll just pull that one this way. And again, I'm just gonna tap. Tap, I need more. And this one I'm tapping a little bit heavier, a little bit more pressure. So you can see that is giving me some really cool texture for that evergreen sprig. Again, top, left, right, and center, okay? Love, love, love that look. And then go back to this one. And I will go ahead and dot a berry. So let's put that on there, just so I can show you how I did those. We'll zoom in. So on this one, again, going back to that original layering of black and brown. 
So black and brown, just brush mixed on your brush. And I'm just gonna pull, try not to get into that berry. Um, and we're just going to slide on the chisel edge, left, right, down the center, left, right, down the center. All right, then I'm just going to wipe that brush off. You could wash it out if you want to, but nine times out of 10, I just wipe it off because it keeps that brown in there um, and just makes a really pretty color. So now plantation pine on the whole brush, the toe, the longest part, antique green. And you can use a variety of different colors. In fact, I pulled a couple other greens that I thought would be really pretty um, as that second color is Hauser Light Green's beautiful, matcha green, citron green, um, sour apple, all in the Americana line. Okay, so that's with the antique green on that toe. Let's get a little bit more. Oops, hello. See, I knew I'd get into that berry. <laughs> right into that red paint. All right. So again, just sliding back, touching and sliding, touching and sliding. And I love too how that wood, you know, plain wood and then turn it into a wood grain. It's just brown, warm white. And I took an identipin and marked off every inch. So now on that antique green, we're gonna pick up a little bit of white on that toe. Okay, and then we're just gonna work that in. Flatten that brush. Now I want you to notice too, look how flat that angle brush still is. This method isn't going to, or this technique is not going to ruin your angle brushes. Every single time I load my brush, I go back to flat um, and getting it back in shape. Okay, so some antique green. Again and pulling that. Okay, now look, that's a little bit brighter than the other side and I love it. But let me show you what you can do now. If you wanted to make this look like it had a little more snow on it, just pick up white on the toe of that brush. I still had those other colors in, just not as much since I painted that one. And I can come back with just white on the toe of that angle brush. and make this look like it has some snow on it. Again, just slide, 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 left, right, down the center. Okay, and how pretty is that? Love, love, love with that white on there. All right. Um, so I just saw a question pop up. The wood grain I did on this frame from Michael's as you can see, it's just the 99 cent frame. I painted the whole thing with asphaltum. And then I took um, a chippy board, a chippy board, a chippy brush with a lot of water and some warm white. And I just went right over it. Let it dry, did an identipin every inch down. And then with the angle brush, I floated asphaltum on both sides just to give it a nice rustic wood look. I think is pretty. Okay, so our berry, I painted it with Red Alert, and I'm going to do a little shading with um, Doxine Purple. Okay, so Doxine Purple. Now what you wanna do when you load this up is you wanna get that red berry color on your brush first. So just on the toe. And then I wanna pick up just a touch of purple. Just a touch of that Doxine purple. And see how it darkens that red to almost a burgundy? Oh, so pretty. Okay, so we're gonna shade the bottom. Let me bring this up just a little bit. And I'm gonna put out a little bit of orange for my highlight. Okay, so I want to turn that sideways so that you can see. And we're just gonna do a small little C stroke. So since I have it turned and this is the bottom, I'm just doing a small little C right there. I'm gonna wipe that off, pick up a little bit of orange 
on the toe of the brush. Let's turn it this way. And then I'll do my little highlight with some orange flame right along the top. Just give it that nice little, oh, just nice warm little highlight there. And then just a little bit of white for a little glint highlight. Okay, so I hope that gives you a really um, good idea of how to paint these evergreen sprigs with an angle brush. Super quick, super easy. Um, I have a lesson on my Sandy McTeer Designs Facebook page on how I do trees with an angle brush as well. So you can paint trees just like I showed you for the evergreen sprigs with an angle brush. Let me back out just a little and paint evergreen trees, okay? Slightly different, but again, with the angle brush, such a fantastic, universal, so many uses for these brushes. Make sure to check out decoart.com for the tradition brushes. Such a great quality brush. So um, oh, just, they last forever, <laughs> um, which probably isn't good from a company standpoint when you wanna sell a bunch of brushes, but at the same time, I know these are good quality brushes, so DecoArt Traditions brushes. So hopefully, again, you guys learned something on how to create those evergreen sprigs with an angle brush. I love it with the glitter. What, it, what about y'all? Do you like it with the glitter? I think so. And even that star, um, starlight varnish, let me see how that's set up. Oftentimes it's, oh yes. So I don't know if you'll be able to see the sparkle, but let me hold that up and... So very, very, very pretty. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today for another Art for Everyone lesson. When you're looking for some inspiration and education, make sure to check out decoart.com. Their Art for Everyone education program has a lot of lessons for you to learn, as well as a lot of projects. When you go to decoart.com, hit that projects button. There are download lessons that you guys could be painting, um, printing off and painting up a storm. So. Again, thank you so much for being here. Make sure to check out decoart.com and shop for all of your acrylic painting needs. Y'all have a great day, a great weekend, and a blessed and wonderful holiday season. I'll see y'all in the new year. Thanks.